guess I can look, just look straight this way today. Good morning. <laughs> good morning, Hugh, <laughs> good morning, or good afternoon uh, on our video listeners today. Welcome back. Uh, announcements today. You should have received some information regarding contacting me in case of emergency. Please take a moment to look that over and keep my number and Kathy's number handy should you ever need to contact us. If, you, if I didn't have your email, I put it in an envelope and mailed it to you, so you might not see that until tomorrow. And uh, Dolores, I don't think I have y'all's email, so I, I think I mailed something to you guys. Uh, Kathy will be leading a Lenten Bible study called He Chose the Nails. It includes a book and video by Max Lucado, who I just absolutely love. The class will be meeting Thursdays at 4.30 starting March 10th. We'll be finishing the, the uh, study on Acts this coming Thursday, March 3rd. We were uh, frozen out this past Thursday, as you know. Uh, if you want to purchase the or if you want to have Kathy purchase the book in a group order, just let her know uh, as soon as possible. Or if you want to pick it up yourself, you can order it on Amazon. It's called He Chose the Nails. Uh, I'll be in a seminary class for March, April, and May that will require trips to Lufkin, Texas once a month. Lots of extra study time <laughs> as well, and that is why Kathy has uh, answered my prayer for help and agreed to lead the next class. So please pray for both of us. Uh, March 5th is a Saturday morning breakfast here at the church. Uh, March 2nd, of course, is coming uh, Wednesday. We will have Ash Wednesday uh, recognition 7 a.m. in the parking lot if you are needing to get in and get out quickly and want to have an imposition of ashes you do not even have to get out of your vehicle for that one or we'll have a short service here in the sanctuary this coming Wednesday at 7 p.m. next Sunday March 6th is our communion Sunday it is also the next CTLC food bank Sunday so please keep that in mind uh, and that, are, that will do it for this morning. Let's, uh, did I miss anything? Okay, apparently not. Our call to worship. Let us pray. Father, we pray for your peace. Peace in our hearts, peace in our homes, and peace in our world. Help us, Lord, to be instruments of your peace, to be hearers of your word and doers of your will. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Let's continue our worship by saying together our, the affirmation of our faith, the Apostles' Creed, on page 881 of your hymnal, page 881. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Show. 
took me back about 60 years to Sunday school. I don't know about you, but I needed to hear that today. Let's pray together. Almighty God, we confess those times we have lost our way and wandered like lost sheep. We too often follow our own desires and we have not followed your ways. We have not been forgiving of others. Hear us as we confess our human frailties. Forgive us, O God, and restore us to your presence. This we pray in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Our scripture today is taken from Luke 9, verses 28 to 36. Now about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but once they stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who, who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he had said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen, listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. These are the words of our Lord. Thanks be Amen. Thank you very much. Uh, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'd like to think that time changes just about everything. We get a little older, we get a little grayer. We have a few more wrinkles than we did last year, or maybe that's just me. But there is no question we are all different people than we were just two years ago when we entered into this thing called the pandemic. It changed the world, and since we live in the world for now, we were all impacted in one way or the other. The world has changed again, of course, as we now deal with what is going on in Eastern Europe. And though it seems far, far away, it will impact each of us at the gas pump, certainly, in the wallet, and in a greater sense, our feelings about the security and safety of the whole world. Those of us who are old enough to remember other wars know that this too shall pass, but it certainly is a time of change and concern. It has changed all of us again and changed how we view the world. So on this Transfiguration Sunday, we're going to look at transfiguration or change in the ways to understand what all that means today. Even though the transfiguration of Jesus is documented in the Bible, it didn't gain full stature as a church festival for over 700 years. The Catholics uh, fixed Transfiguration Sunday in their liturgical calendar in the 1400s. In some church expressions, it is celebrated on a different Sunday, likely uh, around Epiphany, uh, early in January. 
but for Methodists and most Protestants, it's the Sunday prior to the start of Lent, today. Oddly enough, God inspired a little transfiguration story a few weeks ago in my backyard. For the past, I don't know, 10 weeks, I've been watching three little weeds trying to sprout to life in a flower bed. Despite the freeze a couple of weeks ago, these weeds were pretty hardy and they kept right on growing. So I said to myself, if it gets cold enough, they'll die off and I won't have to worry about it. A week after that, I decided the lawn guy would take care of the weeds, certainly. And then I thought, well, maybe I could just hire Jaden to come over and take care of them for me. <laughs> One time, I, I even just thought if I just ignored it long enough, Kathy would take care of it <laughs> for me. She loves to garden, and I thought she'd get tired of looking at those weeds. Well, guess what? <laughs> this week, I pulled those weeds myself. They were deeply rooted, but they did come out, and I felt a little better. And that little flower bed was transformed a bit, too. A little effort on my part in the flower bed was, went from a mess to a, a pretty little flower bed waiting for spring. So what changed? Was it me? Probably not me. I'm still a lazy bum when it comes to yard work. What changed, I guess, was a realization that the instrument of this change was supposed to be me. So those three little words, so three little weeds were a message a message from God. They reminded me that none of this stuff we talk about is magic, even transfiguration. It's not magic, it is a miracle, but it's also work, and it is also God. Like caring for your garden, your kids, or your relationship with Jesus Christ, all these things take work. They take listening and they take a personal commitment. It's soul work with a reward. Good news home improvements and change, another word for transformation and transfiguration, change, they don't happen by accident. We can't sit passively and assume that change will happen to us. We got to get involved. We must take the time and the energy to listen to our own heart, guided by the Holy Spirit, to do the right things, to make the right choices and believe that God is with us. On this Transfiguration Sunday, we look at the Holy Spirit changing Jesus, preparing him for what was coming when he entered Jerusalem at Passover. But I want us all to realize that Transfiguration Sunday is a message about our changes too. And as much as this is a story about what happened to Jesus, it's also a story about the reactions of Peter, John, and James. They didn't know what to do. They didn't fully comprehend what had happened. Changes are hard to understand. Dramatic world events like we're seeing now are scary and they're worrisome. The pandemic hasn't quite gone away, even though local cases are way, way down. Uh, the conflicting messages we're seeing on, about the elections and so much other crud on the TV right now, they bombard us every day and it's confusing and sometimes it's a little frightening. And sometimes I just have to turn off the TV and turn off the radio and turn to Christ instead. How about you? I think all this turmoil is meant to remind us that in Christ we do have the skills and the peace and the hope to deal with all that the world is throwing at us right now. So like Kathy mentioned, I was drawn to this little children's song, this little light of mine this week. And I asked the music team to lead us in the song because I believe the message of Transfiguration Sunday is really about recognizing the light inside each one of us. The light that changes each of us. The light that does need to shine all over Temple, Texas and across the world. The light that gives us peace and promise every day. I want to share that light with you. I do. I want you to realize you have the power to share that light with other folks too. Each of us has been transfigured. It is part of the gift of our baptism, our confirmation, and our growth as a Christian. We're changed and adopted into the family of Christ. Some of us are a little slower than others in recognizing this transfiguration. Like always, I find myself the prime example of those words. The whole 18 years to get to this position the 10 weeks 
to pull three little weeds. I kept waiting for somebody to pull the weeds that were infesting my own heart. One by one they'd been emptied out, I guess, but I don't know if gardening or soul cleansing is ever completely finished. Let me rephrase that. I know that soul cleansing is never completely finished until we close our eyes for the last time in this world and open our eyes in the next. But when we get out of the way, when we pull even just one little weed that is choking our own heart for Christ, we have a little bit more light that will shine a little brighter. The more we let our own frail humanity get out of the way, the more Jesus transforms our heart and really does transfigure our appearance and our lives. The disciples who climbed Mount Nebo with Jesus didn't quite understand that, as we said. So that's why I don't feel so bad that it has taken me some 60 years to begin to understand just a little bit. It was a new thing for them, too. They saw the vision of Moses and Elijah speaking with Jesus, and their response was to build monuments. But the very voice of God told them their job was simply to listen to Jesus, as Paula read. This is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. That's the instruction that Peter and John and James received. It's a pretty simple idea. Listen to him. It's all God wants us to do. Listen, and when we hear the directions of Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit, respond. That's what the song is talking about, taking the little bit of light that Christ has sparked inside us and shining it everywhere we go. And the absolute most amazing thing happens. The more we shine that light, the brighter it shines and the larger it burns. The more we can, we can cope, even prosper and smile as the world around us frets and worries. There's at least one other transfiguration in the Bible. It's Moses. When Moses climbed down from Mount Sinai, he had been visibly changed. His face shined so brightly that people were afraid to look at him. But he still took the message of God to the Jews who were seeking the promised land. In Exodus 34, we read, Moses had to hide his face, his transfiguration. It scared the people. So after Moses received the Ten Commandments, he covered his face when speaking with folks. He only unveiled his face when he went into the temple to communicate with God. I find it interesting that changes in Moses could be covered with a veil. Yet the light of the Spirit shone so brightly in Jesus that his face, his body, his clothing was all a staggering, glowing white. The two or three gathered to witness that event were not frightened, they were confused, but they knew they were blessed to be there. I'm not sure they knew just exactly what to do with all the knowledge. Like I said, they wanted to build these monuments. But God intervened and said, listen, 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 and look in the mirror. Each of us is being transformed every day, too. While it may not be a staggering white glow, the light of Christ is there. I have seen it in each of you. I'm sure you've seen it in others, whether it's been a powerful preacher or a, a saintly neighbor checking up on you or coming by for coffee. God's love transforms you. Don't be afraid of that. Don't put a veil across your own heart. Don't deny Christ. Let your light shine. So if you are struggling with all the world has thrown at you this week, I want to promise you one thing. God is still in charge. God's promise is that one day we will be with him in heaven because Jesus Christ came to earth to save us from sin. We are changed because of God's grace. We are transfigured. We are promised hope. We are assured that the final word is God's, and in that final word, we will be with God in heaven. Those of us who've been through Vietnam or Korea or other wars, we know that it, they impact everybody. We can be the church in prayer for this world. We can care for each other as the early Christians did in the book of Acts. We can make sure that no one feels like they are alone and abandoned 
in the world. We can all check on those we don't see often enough. We can reach out to someone when we are the hurting person. We can reach out to those who are not in our church family yet and bring them the same peace. We can be transformers, transfigurers, Christian soldiers in a battle to save others who right now are struggling and feeling hopeless. Sometimes doing the right thing is hard. Sometimes doing the right thing is what we do after we've tried everything else. Other times the Holy Spirit empowers us to just simply get it right the first time. Sometimes we can forgive others and see the power of forgiveness also changing and transforming our lives. University of Michigan reported on a study that said only 75% of us believe that we've been forgiven by God. Isn't that sad? Only 43% have asked others to forgive them for past mistakes. But 52% of us, or at least 52% of those folks who took the survey, have forgiven others for past mistakes. All that tells me there needs to be a whole lot more forgiven going on in the world if we are going to transform our world and grow into the transfigured body of Christ that we are called to be. And finally, uh, for, for Joan and for others who have expressed concerns of Ukraine, I want to say if that's weighing on your heart, then we need to do something about it. Let's give more to UMCOR. Let's pray for peace. Let's reach out to those who are hurting and be the visible presence of God in their lives. And as we remember the transfiguration of Jesus and the change that came upon Moses, may we be more and more convinced that doing the right thing and the godly thing, the forgiving thing, the loving thing, the transforming thing, the transfiguring thing is the choice we make every time. Let us pray that God will continue to clean up the weeds sprouting in our own heart. Let us be the church. Let your light shine. Amen. Sisters and brothers receive this benediction. God answers prayer. So as we live out this week, may we be a people of prayer. Pray for our world, our community, and our church. Pray for each other, those present today, those on our video, and, and those that we are missing. Go forward in peace, recognizing you too are transformed and transfigured by the Holy Spirit in your heart. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.